Fluorescent glucose biosensors are devices that measure the concentration of glucose in diabetic patients by means of sensitive protein that relays the concentration by means of fluorescence, an alternative to amperometric sensation of glucose. No device has yet entered the medical market, but, due to the prevalence of diabetes, it is the prime drive in the construction of fluorescent biosensors. Application Keeping glucose levels in check is crucial to minimize the onset of the damage caused by diabetes. As a consequence, in conjunction with insulin administrations, the prime requirement for diabetic patients is to regularly monitor their blood glucose levels. The monitoring systems currently in general use have the drawback of below optimal number of readings, due to their reliance on a drop of fresh blood. Some continuous glucose monitors are commercially available, but suffer from the severe drawback of a short working life of the probe. The majority of these work amperometrically. As a result, there is an effort to create a sensor that relies on a different mechanism, such as via external infrared spectroscopy or via fluorescent biosensors. Various strategies exist to detect glucose levels using fluorescence, the first and most common being a FRET competition assay between glucose and a labeled glucose polymer for the binding site of concanavalin A. Over the years, using a combination of rational design and screening approaches, many possible combinations of fluorescent sensor for glucose have been studied with varying degrees of success. In most approaches, the glucose concentration is translated into a change in fluorescence either by using a FRET pair or by using environment sensitive solvatochromic dyes in a variety of combinations. The fluorescent small molecule, protein, or quantum dot have been used in conjunction with a glucose binding moiety, either a boronic acid functionalized fluorophore or a protein, such as glucose oxidase, concanavalin A, glucose, galactose binding protein, glucose dehydrogenase and glucokinase. In general, the change seen with FRET competition assays is small see below. <laughs> Theory of fluorescence Fluorescence is a property present in certain molecules, called fluorophores, in which they emit a photon shortly after absorbing one with a higher energy wavelength. To be more specific, in order for an electron in the outer orbital of a molecule to jump from a ground state orbital to an excited state orbital, it requires a fixed amount of energy, which, in the case of chromophores molecules that absorb light, can be acquired by absorbing a photon with an energy equal or slightly higher. This state is short-lived, and the electron returns to the ground-level orbital, losing the energy either as heat or in the case of fluorophores by emitting a photon, which, due to the loss of the difference between the energy of the absorbed photon and the excitation energy required, will have a lower energy than the absorbed photon, or, expressed in terms of wavelength, the emitted photon will have a longer wavelength. The difference between the two wavelengths is called Stokes shift. This property can be found in quantum dots, certain lanthanides, and certain organic molecules with delocalized electrons. These excited molecules have an increase in dipole momentum and, in some cases, can undergo internal charge rearrangement. When they possess an electron withdrawing group and an electron donating group at opposite ends of the resonance structure, they have a large shift in charge distribution across the molecule, which causes the solvent molecules to reorient to a less energetic arrangement, called solvent relaxation. By doing so, the energy of the excited state decreases, and the extent of the difference in energy depends on the polarity of the solvent surrounding the molecule. An alternative approach is to use solvatochromic dyes, which change their properties intensity, half life, and excitation, and emission spectra, depending on the polarity and charge of their environments. Hence, they are sometimes loosely referred to as environmentally sensitive dyes. These can be positioned on specific residues that either change their spatial arrangement due to a conformational change induced by glucose or reside in the glucose binding pocket whereby the displacement of the water present by glucose decreases the polarity. An additional property of fluorescence that has found a large usage is forced a resonance energy transfer fret in which the energy of the excited electron of one fluorophore, called the donor, is passed on to a nearby acceptor dye, either a dark quencher non-emitting chromophore or another fluorophore 
core, which has an excitation spectrum that overlaps with the emission spectrum of the donor dye, resulting in a reduced fluorescence. For sensing purposes, this property is, in general, used either in combination with a biomolecule, such as a protein, which undergoes a conformational change upon ligand binding, changing the distance between the two labels on this protein, or in a competition assay, in which the analyte has to compete with a known concentration of a fixed labeled ligand for the labeled binding site of protein. Therefore, the fret between the binding site and the competing ligand decreases when the analyte concentration is increased. In general, the competing ligand in the case of glucose is dextrin, a long glucose polymer attached to the scaffolding or to the enzyme. Topic: <laughs> Forster resonance energy transfer. Over the years, using a combination of rational design and screening procedures, many possible typologies of fluorescent sensors for glucose have been created with varying degrees of success. In general, these sensors rely either on FRET or on sensitivity to polarity changes to translate the glucose concentration into fluorescent intensity. In addition to the fluorophores, these sensors contain a molecule that confers glucose specificity, usually a protein. A variety of proteins have been used for this purpose, often with different labs concentrating on one particular protein. The first glucose biosensor reported in the literature was made in 1982 by Schultz's group using a FRET competition assay between glucose and a labeled glucose polymer for the binding site of concanavalin A entrapped in a hollow dialysis fiber. As a result, CON-A was widely used in subsequent sensors in several labs, however CON-A suffers from the downside of high toxicity and low reversibility. As a result, other glucose binding proteins were and are being explored by several labs. In Biotex Inc., Houston, McNichols and Ballastart created a dialysis fiber enclosed Kona fret sensor, which has undergone testing in animal models for several years. Amperometric biosensors, in contrast, can utilize only glucose oxidase as a protein, as it is a redox enzyme. This protein has also been used in fluorescent sensing either simply as an APO enzyme or as a HOLO enzyme. An exception to this group of sensors is the biocapacitor A SODES group, which relies on glucose dehydrogenase instead. The activity of glucose oxidase has also been used to make lifetime based fluorescent, phosphorescent sensors, taking advantage of the fact that the protein oxidizes glucose, utilizing molecular oxygen, and that oxygen quenches the fluorescence of ruthenium. This was done by Awira and colleagues in 1984 and followed by several groups. To be specific, Endo and PASIC have used this GOX based oxygen quenching assay to make a fiber based sensor, whilst McShane uses GOX based oxygen quenching assay in microspheres made with the aim of subcutaneous injection in order to create what the group has coined a smart tattoo, a sensor operating non invasively by reporting across the skin, taking advantage of the fact the skin is permeable to near infrared light. In addition, this group has created several FRET completion assays, first using Kona TRITC CONA, FITC Dextrin 500 KDA, but then switching to GOX-APO enzyme in 2004 TRITC ARPO GOX, FITC Dextrin 500 KDA, and in 2009 testing sensors QSY21 ARPO GOX, ALEXA 647 Dextrin in microspheres. Several other groups have constructed smart tattoos and are reviewed below. One particular GOX oxygen ruthenium quenching assay was used in a study in Ingo Clement's group, in a fully functional sensor to measure glucose levels in a healthy volunteer. The sensor was constructed by functionalizing an oxygen sensor with glucose oxidase and inserting it into the external part of a catheter used for monitoring. APO enzymes can still bind glucose but, due to the lack of cofactors in vitro, cannot catalyze their reaction so are less likely to get damaged. Other proteins that have been used are glucokinase from a thermophile in Deoria group and glucose galactose binding protein GGBP, which is not an enzyme but a periplasmic protein involved in chemotaxis that undergoes a large conformational change. The majority of the fluorophores used for the sensors are small molecules, although some sensors have been made using quantum dots QD or fluorescent protein. Sensors have been made using QD as FRET donors and a small molecule or gold nanoparticle dark quencher as acceptors. 
An example of the former is Loeb's Sensel, an optic fiber system in which the quantum dot is attached to Kona whilst tetramethylrhodamine is attached to cyclodextrin, which in turn is attached to the PEG diacrylate scaffold. An example of the latter is Tang with QD's Kona beta the 400 sorns. Fluorescent protein can be made into a fusion protein with a desired protein, circumventing the labeling steps. Schultz made a GGBP molecule with two GFP at each end. It has not been reported in the literature, but in theory it is possible to improve this by doing a directed in vitro evolution using FACS. This is not easily done by labeling, although a screening has been attempted by Pitner. Fluorescence is not the only type of luminescence achievable in biological systems. Chemiluminescence, the generation of light by means of chemical reactions, is produced by some proteins, such as aquirin from symbiont in jellyfish and luciferase from symbiont in fireflies. These have been used to make glucose sensors. Dornit makes a GGBP split aquirin sensor, and in 2009, Koji Sode made GGBP luciferase with ASP 459 ASN GLC In addition to small molecule dyes, fluorescent proteins have been used. One group made a near infrared near FRET sensor detected by means of time resolved nanotomography alifacocyanin Kona, malachite green dextrin, regarding FRET with alifacocyanin, which McCall has reviewed. In addition, to protein as the glucose binding moiety, boronic acid functionalized molecules have been used. Boronic acid binds to vicinal groups, preferably hydroxyl, therefore, it has a high affinity for carbohydrates. The use of the boronic acid group for the recognition of saccharide has been widely studied by Shinkai, James and their collaborators. To take advantage of this several approaches have been taken. One approach is by fret quenching, in which the system can work through the modulation of the quenching of a dye by a boronic acid functionalized viologen. An alternative approach is by photo induced electron transfer, PET, a mechanism of fluorescence quenching due to the electron rich tertiary amino group near the fluorophore, which is affected by the change in charge of the nearby boronate group when glucose is bound. This has been used in combination with lifetime by one group, not only in fluorescence but as NMR agent for imaging with a europium boronic acid dye. <laughs> Environment sensing dyes The majority of the sensors adopting environmentally sensitive dyes have utilized GGBP, a transport protein that binds to D-glucose and D-galactose and transports them to the membrane-bound TRG receptor triggering the chemotaxis of the bacterium towards that glucose source. It belongs to the MALG family in Escherichia coli, which includes the maltose binding protein, which, depending on the presence of glucose, can adopt two distinct conformations or possibly three generating a 31 degrees hinge movement between the two globular domains connected by a hinge, which is the glucose binding pocket. Its affinity for glucose is K equals 0.2 micro m, which is much lower than the pathophysiological range of glucose found in diabetes 1.7 to 33 mm. As a consequence, several studies have been done to lower the affinity of GGBP, which otherwise would result in near saturation of GGBP throughout the pathophysiological glucose concentrations. The binding affinity of GGBP changes when it is labeled endosterically or peristerically, so several mutants that work at range close to pathophysiological glucose have been created. GGBP contains five tryptophan residues, two of which, W183 in the binding site and W284 in the N-terminal domain which can bind calcium, affect the autofluorescent spectra upon glucose binding. Some studies with GGBP and solvatochromic dyes work not to create a sensor, but to elucidate the chemistry behind the conformational change of GGBP. Examples of this include a study utilizing L255C with acrylodon and ruthenium at the end terminus revealing three conformational states closed and twisted, the fluorescence and phosphorescence of the tryptophan W183 under normal conditions 52, under high pressure and with or without calcium, Sode al. made a series of mutants of GGBP to increase the KD in the unlabeled form near physiological range and remove galactose specificity asp 14 glue. 
residue, the response of an environment-sensitive dye attached to a specific residue of GGBP depends not only on the labeling site, which has a certain environment, but also on the nature of the dye, which interacts differently depending on its geometry. The interaction between a given dye and its environment is hard to predict in silico. As a result, in order to obtain a working sensor, several independent studies have screened a set of environmentally sensitive dyes attached to several possible sites in the binding pocket endosteric site, near it peristeric site, or away from it allosteric site. .One advantage of GGBP is that in the wild type there are no cysteine residues, making the introduction of this residue in a specific location ideal for labeling. A team led by Om Hellinger conducted two large screens. In the first 2002, they made of a series 320 constructs of labeled mutants of 11 bacterial periplasmic binding protein including GGBP for which they made 9 mutants introducing a cysteine in a specific spot Y10C, N15C, E93C, E149C, H152C, W183C, L255C, D257C, V296C and tested the response when labeled with 1 out of 8 dyes Pyrene 340, 390, acrylodin 390, 500, fluorescine 485, 520, NBD 490, 540, NBDE 490, 530, JPW 4039 485, 590, JPW 4042 470, 640, and JPW 4045 470. 640. Out of the 72 combinations made, GGBP labeled with acrylodin in position W183C had a fivefold change in KD equals 5 mm. In a subsequent study, 2007, using the heat stable GGBP from Thermotoga maritima, they screened five mutants Y13C, W14C, Y189C, S131C, and M239C with four dyes IANBD, acrylodin, Psi5, and Psi3, identifying Y13. 3C psi 5 conjugate, which gave a maximal increase of 50% and affinity at 15 mm. A group led by Dornit used three endosteric mutants G148C, H152C and M182C in combination with four dyes acrylodin, 1, 5 IAEDANS, MDCC and IANBD ester identifying M182C MDCC, which gave a 30% change in fluorescence. A very different approach was taken by Pitner in BD, who used a single dye IANBD attached to E149C as a starting point for a directed evolution screen, in which a mutant library is created and selected for winners, namely mutants that meet the selection criteria. With this approach they identified E149C, A213R, L238S with KD of 10 mm and an eightfold increase in fluorescence. This mutant was later used for SPR. Independently another group J Pickup tested two mutants H152C and M182C labeled with Baden 6 bromoacetyl 2 dimethylaminonephtaline bound to the thiol group of the cysteine introduced at site 152 H152C mutant. This showed a threefold increase 200% change upon saturating glucose binding, making it an ideal candidate for a sensor. Later work, adopting the mutations identified by Pitner above, generated a baden labeled GGBP mutant H152C, A213R, L238S, with a dissociation constant in the human physiological glucose range kilometer equals 11 mm and a twofold increase in fluorescence 100% change. Topic. Tissue autofluorescence Another pair of papers suggest that the natural fluorescence, autofluorescence of tissues may be harnessed to track glucose concentrations. These studies took advantage of the fact that NAD pH, in its reduced form, is autofluorescent, and that metabolites such as glucose cause a predictable increase in NAD pH reduction. Topic. Sensing in vivo 
An alternative way of measuring the change in environment of environmental dyes is their change in lifetime, which may give better results in some senses, using lanthanides or e.g. the aforementioned ruthenium metal ligand complex, either with GOX or as an FRET acceptor of an environment sensitive dye, as in the case of ANS 26 GGBP in a ruthenium coated cuvette that shows little increase in intensity but a substantial change in lifetime. The construction of the fluorescent protein is only one subsystem of a clinically viable monitoring device, the sensing protein has to be immobilized and its fluorescence has to be read by a detecting subsystem that, in turn, informs the user. In the ideal situation, the detector could be implanted with the immobilized protein and queried by radio frequency, however this has currently been achieved only with amperometric sensors. The general approach for fluorescent sensors is to attach the protein to one extremity of an optic fiber implanted under the skin whilst the other extremity is connected to the detection subsystem, which includes a path splitter sliced fiber or dichroic mirror to allow the fiber to transmit both the excitation and the emitted light, a filtered light source in general, a laser, and a filtered photodetector a CCD or a PMT. The information thus collected is then analyzed with a computer. Topic smart tattoo The skin is permeable to near-infrared light near. As a consequence, near-infrared dyes can be measured across the skin without the need of an optic fiber. This has been termed a smart tattoo by McShane who created a near-infrared oxygen quenching assay contained in microspheres. However, there is a limited amount of commercially available fluorescent dyes, and a limited amount of environmentally sensitive dyes, such as cyanine psi 7. As a consequence, Pitna made a reactive Nile red dye, but to date no study with a Nile red GGBP sensor has been conducted. Nevertheless, several studies with near dyes have been done. Pickup and Birch made a near fret sensor measuring both the time resolved counts or by nanotomography of alophacocyanin cona, malachite green dextrin, where alophacocyanin is a near fluorescent protein. In another study, the autofluorescence of NaPH, an energy carrier in cells, was assessed as an indirect indicator. A group at Biotech Sync, led by McNichols and Ballastat, created a near fret sensor based on Kona, with near dyes Alexa 647 and Alexa 750, originally Alexa 647 and Psi 7, enclosed in a dialysis fiber attached to the end of an optic fiber, which they have dubbed FAS fluorescent. To improve the stability they attached the protein to a cephadex, a macroporous hydrogel. Despite the change in FRET of only 35% across the pathophysiological range possibly 40% maximum change form no glucose to saturation, the sensor has been shown to decrease in functionality by only 20% after 450 days incubation at 37 degrees Celsius 99 degrees Fahrenheit and to monitor glucose as well as the Medtronic, Minim CGMS sensor in animal models mouse, pig, and dog. However their stated aim is to create a smart tattoo, Draper Laboratory are also developing a smart tattoo, and are currently testing on animals. The performance and the identity of the sensor have not been revealed. Encapsulation in dialysis membranes Despite the higher benefit of smart tattoos compared to a transdermal optic fiber, no in vivo smart tattoo has yet been demonstrated, whereas fiber-based systems have been shown to be potential sensors, the majority of the sensors mentioned in the previous sections consisted of labeled proteins in solution. The only sensors to progress towards an implantable sensor have been either GOX ruthenium oxygen quenching assay sensors or FRET competition assay sensors. To date, no environment sensitive dye based sensors attached at the end of a fiber has been published. For fiber based biosensors to work, the protein must be immobilized to the fiber that can either entrap in a hollow tube made of dialysis membrane or entrapped in a hydrogel. A hollow dialysis tube is a tube with sub millimeter diameter whose walls are composed of porous crosslinked cellulose designed to allow small solutes through but not large biomolecules, such as protein with a cutoff ranging from 0.5 to 20 kDa. As a consequence, they are well suited for sensory applications, where the analyte is free to diffuse across whilst proteins cannot, both the sensor protein inside and the blood, interstitial tissue proteases. 
In fact, the Menarini Diagnostics Glucoday sensor has an improved lifetime because the injected probe uses a dialysis membrane, although it should be noted that to drastically increase the diffusion rate it is coupled with a pump. Topic: <laughs> Encapsulation in a hydrogel Regarding its application in fluorescent sensing of glucose, the first glucose biosensor by fluorescence, which, as mentioned, was made in 1982 by means of a FRET competition assay for the binding site of Kona, was entrapped in a sealed microdialysis tube, in the same lab, namely of J. Schultz. In 2001 another study was published using microdialysis fibers using a FRET Kona sensor but with different labels and using cefadex instead of dextrin, the former being several orders of magnitude larger. After, Dr. Ballastart joined Biotechs as a senior scientist under Dr. Roger McNichols, the chief scientist, where for the past seven years they have been testing the previously mentioned FAS sensor, which used the same FRET system in a dialysis tube. To be specific, the labeled protein was loaded with a P10 tip into a dialysis tube 200 micrometers wide that had been sealed with cyanoacrylate superglue at one end with or without an optic fiber end inserted inside. In the field of sensors of analytes, glucose sensors have been at the forefront due to the large amount of research into glucose sensors as a result of the prevalence of diabetes. Nevertheless, a wide breadth of optic fiber based biosensors, mainly using enzymes, immunoassays, nucleic acids, whole cells, or biomimetic materials, and relying on different detection methods fluorescence, absorbance, chemiluminescence, and scattering, and attachment methods coating, hydrogels, or membranes, the majority of these sensors however, rely on entrapping the protein in hydrogels, as these are more sturdy and protect the protein more than a simple coating or membrane. A hydrogel is a porous crosslinked polymer matrix filled with water. Several types of hydrogel exist and have been used to entrap small molecules such as dyes, biomolecules, such as enzymes or whole cells. In the case of protein, they can work either by physically entrapping the protein having pores smaller than the proteins or by chemical linkage of the protein to the matrix. In physically entrapping gels, the protein has to be added when the gel is cross-linked, so the conditions used must not damage the protein, excluding the hydrogel, which requires non-aqueous solvents or harsh chemicals, an example being TEME dipersulfate catalyzed peroxide radical initiation acrylamide or acrylate, which is used for SDS page but for not protein encapsulation. Hydrogels have been extensively studied, mainly in the entrapment of small molecules for drug delivery, including cases where the hydrogel nanoparticles slowly release the drug to a targeted site. Hydrogels can be classified according to their polymers' constituents, which can be natural hyaluronin, alginic acid, pectin, carrageenan, chondroitin sulfate, dextrin and dextrin sulfate, chitosan, polylysine, collagen, carboxymethylchitin, fibrin, agarose, pullulin, or synthetic PEG, PLA, PLGA, PCL, PHB, PVA, PNVP, P, HEMA, P, bisgarboxyphenoxyphosphazin, P, GEMA sulfate, and others, or a hybrid of the two. In addition to organic hydrogels there are sol gels, which are oxygen-bridged silicates or titanium oxide, that polymerize in water. An additional classification can be by method of polymerization, which can be physical freezing or heating or chemical gamma ray, oxygen or photo-induced radical polymerization in the case of acrylates, vinyls and acrylamides. All the various hydrogels have different advantages and disadvantages, such as biocompatibility, protein stability, toxicity, or lifetime. For example, the gelling conditions for sol gels may damage the protein, and, as a result, several copolymers, such as chitosan, may be added, making hybrid gels or alternative monomers, such as glycol modified tetraethoxyzolane, as it is more biocompatible than the commonly used methoxy or ethoxy modified tetraethoxyzolane. Topic. Fibers with hydrogel Regarding fiber optic based biosensors, several hydrogels have been used but mainly acrylate based polymers and sol gels, either by chemical or physical entrapment. 
In the case of acetylcholinesterase, the target of many pesticides, a sensor has been made chemically linking the enzyme to an acrylate hydrogel or physically entrapping the enzyme in solgol. An optic fiber based hydrogel entrapped biosensor for glucose was made in the lab of Loeb Liao and, colleagues and was named Sensil. This sensor was composed of a photocrosslinked deacrylate modified PEG hydrogel containing the tetrarhodamine, labeled FRET competitor beta cyclodextrin, and the quantum dot labeled apoenzyme. Enzyme concanavalin A. This sensor was tested only in vitro for functionality, however, some tests were done to see the compatibility of the fiber implanted transdermally in mice. In particular, the inflammation was monitored and the energy required to remove it by force was measured, proving that the collagen coated fiber required more force than to remove a hair, which has the same diameter. 200 microliters. Another fiber based sensor was done in Singerum Lab. Santa Cruz. This used a 2-hydroxyethyl metaacrylate hydrogel as a scaffold onto which two dyes were attached one a fluorescent anionic dye and a cationic quencher to be specific, a viologen functionalized with boronic acid, which assumes a negative charge when bound to glucose, making the net charge of the molecule neutral and less attracted to the fluorophore, hence modulating its intensity based on glucose concentration. The majority of hydrogels are attached to the fiber, one exception being the fiber-optic-based sensor made by Itsubayashi's group to measure glucose in fish health indicator, which used a dialysis membrane as the support for the hydrogel. To be more specific, it relied on a GOX oxygen ruthenium quenching assay where the protein was mixed with AWP azide -functionalized polyvinyl alkyl, a photocrosslinkable polymer and cross-linked to a dialysis membrane that was rolled around a pre-made ruthenium oxygen probe ocean optics and inserted into an 18-gauge needle with eight holes on the side akin to a recorder. In such a setup, the integrity of the protein has no effect on the sensor, unless below a certain concentration. As a consequence, the destruction or inaccessibility of a fraction of the protein is not problematic, which is in contrast to FRET or environmentally sensitive sensing. However, the response speed of this sensor is slow and requires a mathematical prediction to be applied to the measurement. An alternative use of boronic acid in hydrogels is seen in Stocker in Norway where the swelling of a boronate functionalized acrylamide gel due to charge change upon glucose binding is measured by a fabry perot interferometer on the other end of the fiber note that this is a different method than fluorescence and relies on scattering. An exception to the usage of placing the optic fiber transdermally is seen in the previously mentioned fiber from Ingo Clements group ruthenium quenching by oxygen released by glucose catalyzed GOX. The sensor, in fact, was constructed by functionalizing a pre-made oxygen sensor with glucose oxidase and inserting it into a glucose sensing apparatus for amperometric sensors, in particular, a microdialysis catheter CMA60 implanted transdermally and the sensor connected to its Tigon tubing. This sensor was tested in a human volunteer and showed results par with current amperometric systems. The usage of a fiber was dictated by the pre-availability of this compared to a ruthenium-coated lens, which would have had achieved the same results, so this approach should be put in a category of its own alongside transdermal fibers and smart tattoos. However, the aim of the group is to create glucose-sensitive nanoparticles to be interrogated with a transdermal optic fiber and controlled magnetically. As a consequence, the group is improving the oxygen sensing probe by investigating novel oxygen sensitive phosphorescent materials, nanoparticle formulation and the creation of magnetic nanoparticles. Topic: See also Blood glucose monitoring Diabetes management Glucose meter equals equals notes